Hi friends, this is Christine Hoover from GraceCoversMe.com and I want to welcome you to the By Faith Podcast, where each week this season I'm talking with a guest about the ins and outs of friendship. As I wrote about in my book, Messy Beautiful Friendship, friendship isn't easy for anyone. It takes time, intentionality, and lots of grace. And sometimes we have to navigate complexities and hurts in friendship that leave us uncertain and sometimes crushed. I'm right there with you and my guests are here to help us think through it all. So far this season, I've talked with incredibly insightful guests about what healthy and unhealthy friendship looks like, how to make friends, how to go deeper in those friendships, and in the last few weeks, I've talked with Ruth Jo Simons, Hannah Anderson, and Jen Wilkin about the harder parts of friendship, like hurt and conflict and forgiveness. If this is your first time listening to By Faith, first of all, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. I'd love for you not only to stick around for this episode, but to go back and to listen to those past episodes. They seriously have been so helpful to me in my own relationships. But also, as we've said countless times this season, friendship is often complex and complicated. I'm sure as you'll find today, and as By Faith veterans have likely found as you've listened, One angle on friendship opens up a thousand more and a ton of questions. So as I do each season here on the podcast, I'll be closing our season on friendship in December with an Ask Me Anything episode. I've asked my longtime friend, Joe Franklin, to join me for a conversation where we'll tackle your questions together. Joe and I have known each other since we were 10 years old. If you've read Messy Beautiful Friendship, you may remember Joe as the friend who sang Friends Are Friends Forever on stage with me at church together. We forgot half the words and laughed our way through most of it, which I'm sure we'll talk about in the Ask Me Anything episode. If you would like to submit a question, and it honestly doesn't have to be just about friendship, simply click through the link in the show notes or head to my website, gracecoversme.com, and look for the link there. All right, let's get to the show. Today, I am so excited to welcome Jamie Ivey to the podcast. Jamie is host of the Happy Hour podcast and the author of the book, If You Only Knew, a great book, by the way. She's married to Aaron, who is the worship pastor at the Austin Stone Church, and she's mama to four. I asked Jamie lots of friendship questions, like what has been hard for her in friendship, and if she ever feels insecure around other women, and about how she's helping her kids work through friendship issues. I just love Jamie, and I loved this conversation, and I hope you enjoy it too. Welcome, Jamie Ivy. I'm so glad to have you on my show today. I'm so glad to be here, Christine. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I was super glad to get to meet you last week, and I remember telling you this, but it was funny to hear your voice coming out of your your actual face in front of me because I listened to your show, and it was so fun to get to meet you in person. It was fun to meet you as well, and I told you, I feel the same way when I have met people that I listened to on podcasts before. I'm like, wait, you're real. I listened to you in my car. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I sort of, you know, you feel like, you know, a person, I'm sure a lot of people say that when they meet you, like, I feel like I kind of know you, but I really don't know you. Um, but I'm excited to get to know you a little bit today, just talking to you. So for anybody who doesn't know you, can you introduce yourself? Tell us about you. Yes. My name is Jamie Ivy, and I live in Austin, Texas with my husband, Aaron. He is the worship pastor at our church, the Austin stone community church. And we've been here 10 years, which in Austin is a big deal because this place is blowing up. So we feel like Austinites. We love the city and we have four kids. Our oldest is a freshman and then a freshman boy. Then we have two seventh grade boys and then we have a fifth grade girl. So we are crazy busy with kids stuff and trying to navigate how to do that well and how to be a family well and a wife well and a worker well. I mean, all the things, how do we do them well? And like you mentioned, I have a podcast, the happy hour with Jamie Ivey. It's about four and a half years old. It's my favorite job I have. And I released a book this year and I also get the 
unbelievable privilege and honor to speak at different events and churches to women around the country. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah. I loved your book. If you only knew is the title. So good. I actually read it and immediately gave it to a friend who I had been talking about some of her past and just, she was dealing with a lot of shame Mm -hmm. and I was so happy to get to hand that book to her and say, see here, like here's somebody who has walked through that and you gave such truth Mm -hmm. to people walking through shame, especially I think. Yeah. So thanks for that book. It was, uh, it was the book like um, I don't know if you have a book like this, but if I were to die tomorrow, I'd be really happy with the one book that I got to release. You know, it's like that book that it's my, it's my heart message, my soul, my story. And so I was super, super happy to get that out into the world. It, you did a great job. Are you working Thanks. on anything new? I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I'm supposed to be, I should be, I need to be, (laughs) um, uh, no pressure from anyone, but I am ready. I just, I, I I don't know. We can talk about this off air, but I just am like focusing on what to do next is just a way harder than I would have ever imagined. Yes. Well, let's talk about that because I feel like right now you are everywhere and God is opening doors. He's giving you a lot of opportunities to not just do your podcast, but to speak around the country. And I, I've wondered myself for you, how do you recharge and how are you kind of maintaining life at home while doing what you're doing? Well, the month of October is not a good month to ask the Ivy family okay. how we're doing. This is the month that, you know, the month on your calendar that you know is coming and you kind of brace for it. Yeah. It's been a really busy month for us. Um, but, you know, I'll give you a super practical way that we're doing it is you know, the day we're recording, it's a Tuesday. I have had three full weeks of travel. I have another week of travel this week and our kids are supposed to have their decom tonight, which is their, uh, like youth group meeting. And Aaron and I just said, Hey, we're not doing it tonight. You know, we're, we're pulling everybody in. We're having family dinner. We're sitting around the table. Mom and dad are both canceling whatever they had and we're coming home. Um, and so sometimes for us, it makes like, it feels kind of drastic to kind of be like, everything's canceled tonight. We're coming in, we're pulling the troops in, but that's one of the ways. And then, I mean, just, I hope everyone knows nobody that does anything, you know, where they seem super busy, they're not doing it alone. Um, tons of help. You know, we have people that help us and people that help me with my jobs. And so I, I told someone yesterday, I was like, I'm so very tired, but I'm so very grateful. Like, I, I don't want my tiredness to be a representation of oh, I hate my job, or I wish I didn't have to travel again. Like I literally, every time I stand on a stage and open God's word, think, I don't know how I get to do this. And I'm extremely grateful that these people trust me. So I like my job. It's, mm-hmm. it's been fun. It's been a, whirl, a whirlwind this past year though. Yeah. What are you most passionate about what you get to do? You know, I love my podcast. I feel super creative when I get to do it. I, I love the conversations that we have. And then just kind of, it feels like I sit down and have this super intimate conversation. Um, sometimes they're super deep. Sometimes they're just super funny. Sometimes they're super educational. It just varies. It'd be like all your conversations with your individual girlfriends look different, right? So I get to do that 52 times a year, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then I get to have that moment. And usually I'm changed for the conversation that we have. So I have my little moment and then it's this weird thing that I just get to almost throw it up into the world and let everyone else enjoy those moments and see what they get out of it. And that is, that's exciting to me. That's fun and creative and let's see how we can do this better. Uh, I love encouraging women. I love encouraging women. And so wh- I think that happens on the podcast. I hope so. That's oh, our yeah. goal. <laughs> that's yeah, our goal. For sure. But I don't always get to see that hands-on, you know? Yeah. And so it just kind of goes into the world and then it's over. But when I get to stand in front of women, it is so fun for me. Um, and just to be able to encourage ladies, that, that, that is my ultimate goal in life. And, and as a Christ follower, like my goal is not just to encourage women like, hey, you're awesome. Go do big things. But here's Jesus. This is why we can do things. So yeah, I love how you said you throw it out in the world and you don't really know what happens because I think that's not always, that's maybe a misconception that people have when you create something, they think that you, you know how it's impacting people or you get a lot of feedback in which sometimes maybe you do, but a lot of times you don't. And so you're just, there's this tension you feel of why, for me, at least with writing that I've had to come to terms with, why am I doing this? Am I doing mm-hmm. this for the Lord and trusting him with it? Or am I looking for that feedback? Oh, but, girl. 
<laughs> yes, 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 yes. And I think that's why I enjoy meeting people on the road. Yeah. I think that's why, because as you know, from creating words and I create words and audio, you don't see the people. Mm-hmm. You literally don't, I could stay in my house and never travel and never hear from anyone. I mean, they write reviews and stuff like that, but I cannot stand on those. But when you meet people face to face and they're like, Hey, your book did this, yeah, this episode. And then I'm like, Oh, this is why I do this because yeah. not for the, not for the, Oh, you're awesome, Jamie. But for this is making a difference. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you personally, I remember I was driving in Dallas I remember exactly where I was. I was listening to your episode with Jackie Hill Perry Mm -hmm. and it was so good. And Mm -hmm. I immediately sent it to people who I knew would relate. And just the fact that you were sharing her story and you asked the questions that I was wanting to ask, that was encouraging to Mm -hmm. me. Such a good show. Such a good show too. Um, Okay. So we've been talking this season on my podcast about friendship And I want to start off with you just saying a lot of people probably follow you on Instagram and they see what you're doing and they see you with a lot of people. And I, I would like to hear from you. Are there parts of friendship that have been hard for you? And if so, what are those? Uh, What parts haven't been hard? (laughs) Like, I think that you think when you're in middle school, like this is the hardest season ever. Like I have no friends. And then you get to high school and college. And I think being an adult with friendships is harder than any of that. I really, really do. I agree. Yeah. One of the hardest things for me, and it kind of piggybacks on what we just said is time. Um, It's really hard for me with time because here, here's what my day looks like. I walk to my office, which is on my property. So I just like walk across the yard and I sit down in my office and I do my thing and I work or I go do my volunteer stuff that I do. And then my kids get off the bus mm-hmm. at, at 3.30, the first one, and then 4.30, the next one, and then five, the next one. And then we might have an activity. And so for me to leave my house, to go invest in a friendship during the week is super hard. Mm-hmm. It is almost impossible and I never want to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's one of my biggest obstacles right now with friendships is just time. And what I have found in my life is I don't need a lot of close friends because I can't be a great friend to a lot of people. Mm. Um, and that's been super hard for me um, because as a, we don't have to talk about Enneagram stuff, but as like a six or someone who feels like I, I struggle with approval. And so I would feel like I was letting people down because it looks different now. And so I think that's something that I've had to come to terms with is friendships can look different in different seasons and it doesn't equal bad, like different doesn't equal bad. That's been really good for me in regards to friendship. So I think time is a really hard thing for me right now. Mm -hmm. It looks different because I have like the people I work with. Those are some of my closest friends because we talk all day, you know, we, we communicate and I'm really try to do a really good job of when I communicate after work hours that it's about friendship stuff and not work stuff, you know, to kind of keep that balance. But I found too, and I don't know if you're like this, that the more I get to do my job and I interview people and travel, those become friends that are kind of a different kind of friends um, because our jobs are the same. We have the same obstacles in marriage and ministry and life. And so those have become some really sweet friendships to me that I may not see every day or talk to every day, but when I do see them, it picks right back up. Yeah. And they can kind of relate to yes. what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you find that kind of disorientation of leaving life and then coming back into life and leaving life and then coming back into life? And are you finding that that is hard in your friendships that some of your friendship friends may not, they may pull back or they may not understand? Yeah. My greatest friends right now are the ones who understand the, the tension that I feel. Yeah. So my greatest friends are the ones who understand, um, the, why I say no to some things, or they understand the difficult month that I'm in right now of October. You know, the hard friendships for me would be the ones that because I'm in a busy season of this month, they couldn't handle it. And then they would get upset with me. And I just am like, I I can't do that. I, 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 do not have the capacity <laughs> to handle the drama. And so, you know, I just saw one of my best friends two nights ago and I haven't seen her in probably like six weeks. And she was like, I miss you. I'm like, I miss you too. And she's like, I can't wait for November, you know? And so she just had this complete understanding and I was like, me too. And, but she didn't make me feel guilty, you know, because the thing is in this season, what I'm not going to compromise is my family. And so I'm not going to go have a girl's night 
out of the four nights I'm home this week instead of being with my family. And so that's the tension for me as well is I'll never choose friendships over family. And that sounds kind of awful when I just said it out loud, but that's how I feel right now. Mm -hmm. Well, are you finding ways to foster friendships maybe in new ways that you hadn't done before? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Voxer, it sounds crazy, yeah. but I love Voxer yeah, I do because too. I have a group of girlfriends that we have been friends for 10 years. Um, and we have, some of them have moved off to different States. Some of them live on the other side of Austin, which feels like Dallas to me. And so, <laughs> but we have this Voxer chat and we can just feel the freedom to check in whenever we want. And that seems so crazy, but it's 2018 and technology is a blessing and a curse. Uh, but it is a great way for me to just stay up to date on their life a little bit. Um, so Voxer is really good for that. I, I think that's the best way that technology is helping me right now with my friendships. Mm -hmm. Stay connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, I have like, I have two friends. I have one girlfriend that I talk on the phone with every day. We've been best friends since ninth grade. So nothing's changed there. She's like my person. So you we talk still on talk the phone every day, almost every day. Yes. Just briefly or sometimes it's briefly, sometimes it's long. Sometimes it's two or three times because we had to go. We don't talk every day on the weekends because we're just with our people, but we almost talk every day. Wow. I don't really like talking on the phone. Oh, I don't either. No, no, no. I don't either. But I like talking to her on the phone. Yeah. Well, good. That's great. Mm -hmm. You have that. Mm -hmm. I have a friend long distance that we set up like once a month, we talk on the phone for about an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Just catch catch up. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the daily, oh, talking on the phone. No. <laughs> okay. Well, what, what about insecurity? Because I think we just sometimes need to hear that other women have insecurity. Do you have insecurity around other women and especially in the area of friendship? I'm like the weirdest person on the inside. Like I, you look at me and you think she's the most self-confident woman I've ever met. And on the inside, I'm like a little girl crying. Uh, I do have insecurity and I've come a long way and so much, some of it is very sin rooted. Um, I'll be the first to admit, and that's what I have come a long way in, but I still, I do battle insecurity because I'm also, I already said it. I'm also very approval driven. And so what does it feel like for me to walk into a room full of women that I do know or don't know, I'm going to feel different insecurities. Um, and so that is a struggle for me for sure. Um, in this weird way, I feel as though if I'm in charge of the situation, I don't feel as insecure. Uh, yeah, I think we all, yeah, if we're in control, we're good. I also have a control idol. Let me just throw out all my idols to you, Christine. Uh, approval, control. If I'm in control of the situation, I can have a better handle on my insecurities, but there's some problems there as well. But I do, I do battle insecurity. And, you know, one of the things that my husband has said to me often is when I'll come to him and, and tell him about some sort of insecurity, he'll say to me, mostly joking, but also very serious. He'll say, Jamie, people are not thinking about you mm -hmm. as much as you think they are. Mm -hmm. And so funny, but I often remember that. And I often, because I put myself in the other situation when I walk into a room, I, I'm usually insecure about myself. I'm not worried about anybody else, you know? And so trying to remember that situations like that for women can be insecure for all of us. And so if we just kind of put all of that down and think, Hey, we're all kind of feeling a little weird about this first time gathering, first time meeting. I mean, you and I just sat together in a meeting for like two days and I didn't know everybody. Mm -hmm. And I walked in and felt like a little like, oh my gosh, I don't know. Do, am I supposed to be here? How did I get invited? Like, are they going to like me? And it went away very quickly because yeah. I realized it was a super warm and inviting environment, obviously. But I do struggle with that. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually felt the same way. Those are the exact thoughts I had. But how do you... <laughs> talk yourself through those moments, especially with other women. And let's, I'm thinking of women who are maybe new to a church or they're, they're getting up the courage to go to a, a Bible study or a book club or something. And how do you, how would you encourage them to talk themselves through that insecurity? What I'm about to say sounds super churchy and cheesy, but there's no other way to say it. And so just, just, just go with me here. But I really do talk to myself like, um, and, and remind myself of my worth. And I don't mean that in like a, a Jesus, Jesus churchy way. It's true. Like mm -hmm. it really, really is true that I have to say, Hey, like none of these women in here define you. Like they can't give you your definition of your worth. Only I can like, not me, but I'm thinking like God's talking to yeah. me, you know, God, he's saying to me, like, 
I already define you. I have given you worth. These women can't change anything. And so I think that's one of my fears is that someone will define, someone will give me the definition of you're not worthy. You're not supposed to be here. Uh, who invited you? All of those fears that take you back to that middle school lunch table of how'd you show up here? This is our table. Um, and I have to remind myself that God's like, I have given you worth. I have put you here. And then I'm also like super really like confident in the sovereignty of God as well. And I'm like, God, you set this up. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I can't doubt. And that comes for me a lot with my job of like walking onto a stage to teach. Oh man, I'm a nervous wreck before I go up there. And I have to remind myself, God, you, you set this up. Like this is your plan. And so I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do. Uh, and I felt that way. We haven't, you know, fortunately and unfortunately had to go into a lot of church situations, not being on staff. It's a yeah. whole different ball game, yeah. you know, but walking into a new church can be daunting. And so, you know, if that's a woman that's listening and that's even their struggle of just thinking, man, is, am I walking into this church, you know, to find someone to approve of me? Or do I really come here because I want to know you, God, I want to seek you. And once we just change our mindset, it can help bring down those walls. And then we realize everyone's here is feeling probably the same thing. You know, we're all in this together. Yeah. And we have the opportunity to love someone else in their mm -hmm. insecurity. I think another thing also, sorry, I'm going to say this too. This, this year I did a six week Bible study in my home and I just invited random people. I mean, just went through my phone. I'm like, Oh, I've texted you before because you gave my kid a ride home. Hey, you want to come to Bible study at my house? And so I had this kind of hodgepodge group of women that showed up for six weeks and a lot of them didn't know each other. And so one of the women on the very first day, like the very first thing she said out of the bat was, I don't know why I'm here. I feel really insecure and I'm afraid you guys aren't going to like me, but I just showed up anyway. And when she said that, everyone was like, I kind of feel the same way too. Thanks for saying that out loud. I'm so glad we're here. And in that moment, it was like everyone just kind of exhaled. Like, yeah. okay, I can be honest with this. And so I, that really, when she did that, I thought, this is what I like. I like that a whole lot because she was willing to kind of show her cards per se. Mm -hmm. She was willing to say, here's what I'm feeling. And it was a super safe situation because no one was like, well, that you don't know Jesus very well, do you? Because you're not confident in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, they just loved her and were like, me too. So yeah. that was a fun moment. That's great. Okay. Jamie, whenever my book came out, Messy Beautiful Friendship, I had many women texting me or messaging me and saying, we need this for our daughters. Like I need something to help my daughter think through friendship because there, she's already, and these are women whose daughters are like sixth grade, seventh grade. They're already facing difficulties with other girls. And so I would love to talk to you, but just about how you're helping your kids work through friendship. Um, can we start, let's start with the daughter thing. Mm -hmm. Cause you have a daughter. How old is she? She's 10. 10. So like Fifth, or fifth sixth grade. grade. Fifth grade. So, how is she experiencing relationships with other girls in fifth grade? You know, my daughter stories in fifth grade. She's a very confident girl, and so she's going to be a leader, and I think that's going to be in her favor a lot. You know, and so she's going to be a leader. It can also be super easy to fall into some sin um, as a leader in middle school as a girl. Sin, as in. I don't want to use the word bully by any means, but just kind of controlling and in charge. And I tell people what to do and they do what I say. And I don't see that in her, but I see that can be a downfall of a leader in middle school as a girl. Let's just be honest. We've all, I have seen those from my boy's point of view when being in middle school. But as a daughter, you know, we've had, she had her first little like friend fight just recently. And that was hard for me. It was hard for me to uh, because my first instinct, and although I didn't say this out loud, my first instinct was what did she do wrong? Like what was her story? Error? Yeah. Yeah. It was my daughter's error in this relationship. Um, and I think, I don't know where that comes from, but I do think it's not that much of a bad thing because I've seen a lot of parents think that their kids could do no wrong and they'll hear an, a one side from their kids about this kind of disagreement that they got in. And then they're very quick to just be against that kid and raise their own child up without investigating. What were your emotions yeah. in this? What were your words that you said? And so 
I'm, I'm not accusing my daughter. I'm also very fully aware that there are always two sides to every single story that you yes. hear. And so I keep that in mind when I talk with my kids about friendships. And so she had her first little friend fight. They got in a little argument on the bus and she came home. And the funny thing is she didn't mention it to me. I could tell she was a little weird, but the mom texted me, the other mom, which I'd so appreciate. I'm like, mom, we have to stick together. Yeah. Every, if you're a friend of mine and you know, my kids, you have every right to text me and tell me what you saw. But the mom texted me and just said, Hey, are everything okay? They said they got to a little, and I was like, Oh, thanks for telling me. So then I was able to go to her and talk to her about it. And she opened up. And so we had a really great conversation just about um, our words and kindness. And then I got to ask her. And at first she was like, I didn't do anything wrong. And then we talked some more. And by the end, she could self-identify a way that she had maybe been a little bit mean to her friend. And she didn't identify it at first because she didn't, she felt like she had a right to be that way. And I get that, right? That's, that's an adult problem as well. We don't self-identify as being mean to someone because it's our right because they were mean to us first. And so we had a really good conversation just about how kindness is sometimes hard, even when people upset you. And I'm telling you, Christine, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times to my kids, you have got to be kind to your friends. Um, because that's something I really want to teach them is that friendships are super hard. They are super hard and you can get hurt and you can let it, you can make the decision in your head. That you're going to let the friendship go, but it's worth it to continue to be kind and that's teaching our kids the gospel. I mean, it really is. The kindness is, it trumps everything. And so it was a good conversation. I'll tell you what, I don't, did not like that conversation. I did Why? not like it one bit. Um, because I don't like the idea of someone being mean to my kid. And I also don't like the idea of my kid hurting someone else. Yeah. And so it's both ways for me is I want to protect her. And I also, I want to raise kind kids but we also have to know as parents, our kids are going to screw up because guess what? Kids are dumb. They're stupid. Their brains aren't fully formed. They're going to be mean. And so we get to help them learn how to um, remedy that, how to ask for forgiveness, how to be kind next time. And so parenting. Mm. Yeah. Well, and it's hard because when your kids get older, you realize how much the other parents also come into it. It's a, it's a complex relationship because as you just said, you know, the mom. And so you also are navigating that relationship. So yeah, that's hard. hard. Yeah. So can you tell me maybe some other things that you're helping your daughter think through as far as friendship goes? Yeah. One thing we talk about a lot, uh, stories involved in a couple of programs at school, which I'm really proud of her for, um, uh, big buddies and other, another kind of pals type thing. And so one thing we talk a lot about at our house is how do we find that person that maybe is getting overlooked? Mm. And so how do we be a friend to people who they're maybe not in our friend circle? Because I think that is adults struggle with this, but man, I'm telling you fifth grade, middle school, high school, we want to just be kind and friends and inclusive with the people that we like. That's human nature, right? We, we go with the people that we fit with, but I want my kids to see the person that maybe not be in their group in their crowd and they might be overlooked, how are you still showing kindness to them? I'm not asking you to be their best friend. I'm asking you to be kind to them. And so we talk a lot about what that looks like as well. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting how when your kids have relational issues, it almost feels like it's happening to you. It's like, I feel it for them. And I feel sometimes I have to remember how they're experiencing it may not be what, how I'm experiencing this mm -hmm. because I sometimes feel it even more than they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. And that's when I just, am like to listen to what they're truly saying. And also sometimes I have to dig deeper with my daughter. She's not as open, um, even as one of my sons is. And so to have to dig deeper in there and try to take in a bunch of context clues about what might really be going on. So let's talk about your boys. You have three boys. What ages are they again? I have um, a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 14-year-old. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So what are the conversations you're having with your boys? Are they any different than story? They are different. And the thing that, that is different the most right now, especially with my ninth grade son, is uh, th this could I could start crying at any moment, Christine, just to let you know. Um, but he has pulled away from me a little bit more and is attaching to his dad more. Yeah. 
it's a great thing. It is what you want. It is how it's supposed to be. Uh, but my mama heart is like, what happened to my baby? Like, why is my baby now choosing to talk at night to his dad and tell him things and not me? And so I'm finding out things about his life through my husband. And uh, <laughs> that's happened to me too. I have three boys they are 15, 12 and 10. I totally get it. And it's just, uh, it hurts my heart. Look, I have tears of eyes. <laughs> it is like this new thing for me. And it's a, my first kid that this is happening to. And I'll experience this two more times with my other boys, I'm sure. But that's been hard for me. Again, let's just bring up my idol one more time of control is I feel like I'm losing a little bit of control over him. It's a good thing. He's growing up. He's, yeah. he's 14 years old and um, everything that he's supposed to be doing, he is. But I'll tell you, I miss those conversations with him, you know, mm -hmm. but I still have, I have a 13 year old and a 12 year old son who I still tuck in at night and sit in bed with them, you know? And so those moments are still there, but I, I see where they're going. Mm -hmm. What kind of friend issues do you see that, that they're having or, you know, what are some of the things that you're teaching your boys about friendship? You know, it's funny because as far as I know, and I feel like I might know, or at least Aaron would know, <laughs> I don't feel like <laughs> they've had a lot of friend issues and it's funny because my boys are so different. My oldest is this kid who, um, he is just going to be a friend to everybody. He Aww, is that kid, like he's going to get through high school and they're going to look back and be like, I remember that kid. He was friends with everybody. Um, my other two boys are, I would say they have their little crowd, you know, and they're like, it's like this little gang of guys that run together and it's so cute. And there's, they're all great kids. And so I don't see any concerns here, but they're just so different. And so, um, we're having different conversations with them about different things and not to like, th you know, talk about my kids, but the conversations that we might be having would probably be the same that we're having with story just on a different level you know, and different because it's dudes and boys. And, and I'll honestly say Aaron speaks into that a little bit more than I do just because I've never been a guy with guy friends. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't understand completely the dynamics, although I would say they're a lot more similar than we would think. Yeah. 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 Well, have you had any red flags with any of your kids' friends where you have had to say or help your, your kids think through this might not be the best friendship and how have you mm -hmm. handled that? You know, we haven't had any where we're like, hey, we see that this is going to be bad for you as a person. There was one, and I won't say who, I won't give out any yes. details, uh, but there was one time that there was a friend that we didn't see red flags as in this person's going to be a bad influence over you. We saw some red flags as in the way that they were towards us as oh, parents. Oh, okay, okay. And so we just brought those to the attention so that we could say, Hey, here's what we noticed. Here's what we don't like about that. So yeah. here's what we need you to know. Yeah. Um, but we didn't say, Hey, you can't be friends with this person. They're bad news bears. None of that. Um, we just noticed some poor communication skills and some kind of indirect disrespect. Yeah. Hey, we don't like that. Yeah. Well, it's turning away from kids. You brought up Aaron and I've, I've also heard a lot of questions from women about how do I have couple friends and how do I help my husband cultivate friendship? Gosh, couple friends are hard, right? I know. Because I think it's you got to get two for two and that's I just know. difficult. All four people have to really like each other mm -hmm. and enjoy each other. Yes. So we have, um, a, a small, a small couple friends where we would like, we, we, we get it. We have one amazing couple friend and we vacation together. Like she's one of my greatest friends. He's one of his greatest friends. We just, we do a lot of life together and that's rare. It really yeah. is, you know, especially to say we're going to go on a vacation for five days together with our families. My encouragement would be as a woman talking to another woman who's like, I, I wish my husband was more in with these couple friends is I would say, try it, but don't push it. Because I think that can lead to resentment from why are we hanging out with them again? And they may not have as good of a friendship together. And so then, you know, that can, that can turn hard for the, for the couple of trying to make a square fit into a round hole. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you just can try so many times until you say this doesn't fit. And so I, I'm here to say it's hard. It's super hard. Um, as far as like, friendships, I am a really, really big believer in if you are a part of a local church is for you to serve somewhere. 
because serving develops friendships. It really does. When people are on a shared mission, um, they develop bonds in deeper ways. I mean, we've all experienced this. We've gone on a mission trip. We've gone on a work trip for heck. And you come home and you're like, these are my best friends ever (laughs) because you have been doing something with the same mission together. And so if, if you're wanting your husband to, um, you know, have more guy friends, this is so difficult because we don't want to be pushy, naggy women. That's not what I'm, I'm not saying that at all, but maybe a, a really sweet from the heart, genuine encouragement about getting involved in some sort of ministry through your local church. Mm-hmm. That's a great, great point. I heard um, Janie Ortland say, she calls it having a trail to blaze together, that the friendship kind of has to be about something. You have something in common and serving together is a great thing to have in, have in common. So yeah, I mean, a great example is my girlfriend, Amanda, who's one of my, helps me with my work. Uh, we were friends before she started working for me. We were mm-hmm. great. We were good friends, um, but we've become great friends since we worked together because we have this shared mission, you know? And so it's it's really true that that does actually happen. Yes. Okay. Well, one final question. I, I have noticed from your social media that you are really good about cheering other women on that, that, that is, seems like almost a passion of yours to cheer other women on and encourage them. Why is that so important to you? You know, it is important to me. It also comes naturally for me. Like it's, I don't feel as though I don't wake up in the morning and think, okay, I think that today what I should do is really encourage someone and cheer on someone. It just becomes natural for me because I really am proud of people. Like I sound like an old woman all the time. I'll text my friends. I'm like, I'm so proud of you for what you've done. And I sincerely, genuinely am just so proud. I also not, not, not to get too much into this. I really, really think that we live in a day and age where if women cannot cheer on each other, I, I, I don't know what we have because, um, the other alternative is tearing each other down and that's not going to do anything to help women to be able to follow their callings and do what God's gifted them in and do what they do best. And so for me also, I have a, a really good perspective on, this scarcity mentality. I think a lot of people can be afraid to cheer people on in their same field because, Mm -hmm. Oh, what if I cheer her on and then they buy her book and don't buy mine? Or what if I cheer her on and they listen to her podcast and not mine? Or what if I cheer her on and they go to her business instead of mine? And I just think that at the, at the root of that is some kind of pride where you just feel as though you, you don't have the ability to open your doors to let anyone else in. And I'm telling you, I don't know how many women there are in the world, but there are enough women in the world to buy everyone's book and listen to everyone's podcast and shop at everyone's boutique and join everyone's PTA. Like there, y'all, listen, there are so many people in the world. And so I do not buy into scarcity mentality, which also helps me cheer on my friends who do the same things as I do. Like I, I do not buy that lie for a second. And I'm not, I am not pretending. I'm not, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Uh, And so for me, I love cheering women on because I love encouraging women. And that just goes to women that I'm teaching and women that I'm running alongside. Yeah. So for women who are listening, how can they, what are some practical ideas you could give them about how they could encourage and cheer on the friends in their life? Yeah. I mean, talk about them publicly. If you are on social media at all, Facebook, Instagram, talk about your friends that are doing great things publicly. I think that is really, really, really an easy way that technology lets us cheer women on is to say, Hey, look at my girlfriend who started this new business where she makes cupcakes that are gluten-free, corn-free, dairy-free, (laughs) sugar-free, like, you know, like, look at this. She's amazing. And they taste good. Um, Cheer, cheer them on. Another way is the best way, even better than that is to, to verbally look people in the eye and tell them um, that you're proud of them. I think we don't say we're proud of people enough. And I think it feels weird to say I'm proud of you because for some reason we think that we're better than them because we're proud of them. And I think, no, we can just be proud of each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I tell my, I heard one time someone said that a boy needs to hear most from his parents is that you're proud of them. Mm -hmm. And that has stuck with me forever. And so I literally tell my boys that almost every day. Um, But I think we need to be telling our friends that I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the work you're doing. And even if it's like, you look at your girl, even if you're not in the world that you and I live in, where we do things publicly, even if it's like, I, I saw the way that you were parenting your kid at the soccer game when they were having a meltdown and God, I'm just proud of you. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like that means a lot to somebody. Oh, so that's yes. just saying, Hey, we're in this together. Yeah. We need that. 
We need that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm cheering you on. You're doing good work with everything you're doing. I'm really thankful and thankful that God's given you these opportunities. You're stepping into it. Well, keep going, press on. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank you. A few things before you go, friends. Every Wednesday, the day after By Faith releases, I always jump on Instagram stories to answer any questions from the week's episode. So what do you want to know or to talk about after listening to my conversation with Jamie? Find me on Instagram at christinehoover98 and let's chat. Also, if you're enjoying these conversations, I'd appreciate it if you'd help me spread the word about By Faith. Leaving a review on iTunes helps with that, but what helps most is simply word of mouth. Let your friends know about this season as we're discussing friendship and invite them to come along and listen. Join me next week as I talk with Marissa Henley. Marissa was diagnosed with a deadly form of cancer at an age when her kids were really young, and her friends came through for her in a big way. So Marissa and I are going to talk about how we can help our friends when they face adversity or times of suffering. Not only is Marissa's story incredible, but the practical tips she gives for serving our friends is so helpful. So friends, meet me back here next week. And until then, keep walking forward by faith.